Hello tanks and tankettes and welcome to a view of play. Courtesy of eight eens here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be beans. And they're in the Progetto Mod 46, which is a fairly familiar sight on the battlefield at this point. I hardly need to explain how the Italian auto-loading system works these days. Suffice it to say, Beans is also well aware of how it works and you'll get to see some uh, fairly good uh, demonstrations in this game of patience when trying to maintain DPM versus occasions when the burst damage is a bit more preferable. So this first part of this tier 10 game is basically just spent sat here in cover looking for targets of opportunity and uh, unless he gets some uh, some fully broadside targets I mean he's going to maybe be struggling a little bit we'll, we'll see who pops out around that corner if he's just kind of guessed and led that shot he might have been able to hit the TVP with one. We also know there's a WZ around there as well, but they have to be at least fairly aware if they've managed to get to a, a tier nine, which takes, you know, some battles that typically you can get shot if you sit around on that corner. But uh, apparently they weren't quite aware enough, so there we go. <laughs> he just unleashed two of his shells, only one of them penned, unfortunately, but that's a good start. However, that will definitely have given away uh, if not, uh, if it happened already, there is stuff here, but um, meanwhile, well, he spots an opportunity to take out that 12T and does so. And that's where that autoloader comes in really useful. Now, the EBR we're going to see a bit more of later, uh, but for now, I think he's more concentrating on that WZ. Uh, that T62A not looking that healthy, so <laughs> clearly a little bit concerned about that. And oh, hello WZ, you're going to sit there and... Ooh, that was awfully close. Uh, he got two of his shells off there, but uh, wasn't actually able to make either of them do damage. Then concentrates on the TVB who's poking out, but expends his entire clip in doing so. And of course now he is with the worst possible DPM if he just keeps shooting that... Uh, that, that last shell so he's going to basically want to wait till he's reloaded a bit and there we go he's got two shells now clearly wants to take a pop at this EBR he's running around like a mad thing but while he's peeking out for that he takes a heat shell to the turret not that it needed to be a heat against the armor on this thing of course so takes another chance at the EBR out of shells again. But this is not a bad position for using the full burst potential of the clip because he's nice and safe in cover and so therefore he has the time to sit and fully reload. Of course it does have a knock on with the DPM but there's not always like sometimes DPM isn't the only consideration sometimes you want to be able to get out as much damage in as short a space of time as possible so he decides to have a little peek and discovers the tier 10 Brigetto uh, manages to get two shots off though and also provides an excellent bit of distraction for his own team's Brigetto to finish them off does take a little extra hit himself in the process from even 90 but that's not too bad, all things considered. Although he has to be careful, he's getting down to about half health at this point. And there are almost certainly tank destroyers sitting near the enemy cap. The, the Badger is accounted for, so we know the Badger isn't there, but there's still a Yag Tiger and Udez and an SU 130PM. Well, actually, I think the SU 130PM might be in town. Talking of the Udez, they were actually on the field a bit, so that's another bit of. Uh, burst damage in there and is able to uh, take cover while he's reloading although he could yeah, okay there we go he uses his uh, bottom shot on that uh, <laughs> that's a weird way to put it I said it and didn't think about what I was saying <laughs> anyway um, but uh, yeah uh, this means if he keeps firing here you know it's it's gonna hurt his damage output so he's actually, he's actually waiting for that second shell to come back and he's going to wait again for the second shell and then that should, there we go, put Udez in a position where he can just finish them off. 
He's almost out of AP at this point though. He does seem to be carrying quite a high proportion of uh, AP to APCR in this particular tank and I suspect that's just for games like this where it is tier 10 because uh, there are plenty of armoured targets around. Although the, the gun on this is pretty good, uh, pretty good isn't going to necessarily be good enough against, you know, Panzerkampfwagen 7s and Object 430Us. So, while this has all been going on, uh, they have, I mean, they've kind of levelled things in terms of, or they've at least kept pace, maybe that's a better way to put it, in terms of uh, kills. They've lost control of the town largely, but there is still that Type 5 Heavy. And uh, I'm actually recording this after Gamescom, but it is in the very recent past, Gamescom 2019. That Type 5 Heavy is a Gamescom account, and it doesn't usually inspire confidence when you see one of these special event accounts rolling around the place. So we'll have to wait and see how they've done exactly, but just the fact that they are still alive and in a not totally terrible position tells us it must be a player that has at least some idea of what they're doing. They haven't just charged in to the middle of a whole bunch of enemies and immediately died, which these accounts have a bit of a reputation for doing because, you know, it's somebody that hasn't necessarily played the game before, they pick the biggest baddest, meanest looking tank they can. They drive forwards towards the enemy and die in a hail of shell fire. That tends to be how it goes. But that hasn't happened in this case. So this yes, this might well be a person who has played World of Tanks before. I mean, just the fact that they're still alive <laughs> tells us that that is probably true. So this is a bit of a tricky position. Uh, they do have their own EBR-19 left alive at this point, but they are very much on <laughs> the other side of the map. Beans themselves are uh, themselves is uh, unwilling to try and push forwards into this Ulez and Yag Tiger because between the two of them they could just kill him. So although he was looking to maybe, oh there we go, actually get some shots off here and might actually do so against this Udez who's revealed themselves whilst firing against the ISM presumably. It's only going to be the one shot and because the ISM has pushed into a position where that 430U and the Panzerkampfwagen 7 can actually start shooting at them, well they've lost the ISM but the EBR is now behind that tier 10 German Heavy and hopefully can take them out because they don't look terribly high health. I mean their own Type 5 is also not terribly high health. But, oh there we go, it's actually the Udez that gets the kill, presumably with the EBR's distraction. Uh, so yeah, they were able to support each other to some extent, but at this point the fact they had the greater numbers there available has helped win out. And because we know the 430, fairly low health well this is a very very easy job for an auto loader any auto loader at this stage would have been able to just basically run in and as a bonus he would have been able to take the hit if need be anyway but as it was they were facing the other way so that wasn't really an issue so there goes the EBR but they have revealed in their death that the Udez and the Yag Tiger the last two enemies are now split apart and so this really does just become kind of mopping up at this point as long as they are reasonably careful there's plenty of time they can quite easily take home the victory and in fact there is the Udez so he didn't even break stride to uh, get a hit into that that just leaves the Yag Tiger who's being spotted by their Udez medium tank or possibly the S1 and if Beans is lucky, he might get that final kill. That's actually the rear of the Yak Tiger. But RNG trolls him. And even though the next shot is available it, very shortly after, it's not quite soon enough. Four kills, though, which is not half bad. I mean, it's not like he would have gotten anything extra in terms of uh, awards for five. But still, though, in a tier 10 game, 5.2k damage, Leverschlei hose medal. Uh, Confederate and the, uh, the high caliber, as long with a very unsurprising ace tanker 
It just goes to show that in the right hands, this is a very capable tank. There's a reason why it is so popular in frontline mode. It's got a very good combination of mobility and as long as you're using it sensibly, which I think for the most part Beans was, in fact I don't really think that there were any shots I could call out there uh, where they uh, were using the uh, the burst potential versus keeping up their DPM. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's a very, very potent damage dealer. It, it, it has got a, a very good tool set available to it. But you do have to pay attention when you're playing any of the Italian auto loaders, and uh, yeah, Beans certainly was, I think. So yeah, that was a good demonstration overall, and a pretty good performance considering that they were bottom tier. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed this replay, and if you have, you can do all the usual things down underneath the video, and of course, as always, stay tuned for more.